the US dollar is the linchpin of the global system. Uh, if and when the dollar gets in trouble, is the entire global system that will fall apart. Uh, such a trouble is actually totally predictable at this point. Uh, I knew about it a long time ago that uh, the uh, system will not be able to uh, sustain long-term evolution. The, the dollar roll was negotiated in 1945 at the peak of the power of the United States. Uh, they took over the role of the British pound, uh, I would say, in terms of managing the global system. Uh, that uh, system of privilege, because it is a privilege, uh, would not be permanent. It wasn't permanent for the British either. So the question is what happens afterwards? And the default will be three monetary zones which will enter in competition. There will be a dollar denominated zone or a US dominated zone, probably the Western Hemisphere, is at least what the United States uh, would like to do as a fallback. There's going to be a Euro, European dominated zone and an Asian zone. And the volatility between these three zones will be higher than they are now between all the national currencies. There will be foreign exchange controls between the three zones. There will be war between these three zones because zones like the oil producing Middle East and, or India don't fit in such a scheme. So who has influence in these critical areas? Historically, those questions have resolved, been resolved in war. So that's why I was hoping to create a, an initiative uh, that would be neutral. A currency that's nobody's national currency. A currency that is nobody's national interest. Uh, so, uh, a currency that would be backed by the major commodities of the global world system, uh, these dependencies exist already. And uh, in addition, uh, perhaps the main, most important from my perspective was it's possible through such an initiative to create a currency that actually makes it profitable for the biggest, largest multinational businesses to think long term. The thinking long term board for the corporations is a precondition, in my view, for a sustainable planet. It's the big corporations that actually make the decisions of what we will be doing in the future. It's not governments, and it's certainly not citizens. Uh, so if they just optimize the next three or four quarters, uh, that will not get us to a sustainable planet. That will work for everybody. Uh, I was hoping that with a system that makes it profitable to think long term, that would also resolve the geopolitical issues that I just mentioned. You actually remove the pawn from the chessboard. In other words, that dimension would have a safety zone. And that's what I tried to introduce first uh, within the Euro environment. Uh, I was blocked. And uh, that's what I've been trying again in the 1990s. I think rather the first decade of, of the 2000. And, uh, well, it didn't work either because I now understand why in 5,000 years of history there has never been a preventive change in the monetary system. Because the objections that I got from the bigger businesses after having checked that the system would work technically, that was tested several times, but then the board question is, all right, will this not be perceived as a possible alternative to the dollar? And therefore, the Americans will not like it. Uh, and then, then everything freezes, nothing happens. So that's why, historically, 
no preventive changes are occurring because there's always one power that has the advantage of the status quo. And as long as that power is there, nobody will dare to change it or challenge it. And that has been what we're repeating now, unfortunately, with a huge cost. Not only to businesses, but to the population on this globe. Because the breakdown of the entire supply chains on a global level will be a very costly affair.